Yeah, dude, we can start crossing some things off on the whiteboard. Let's see what we got. We got, um, make the drive shaft. Still need to do that. Top off gear oil. I don't know if he did that. Uh, get bolts for leaf springs. He's doing that today. Uh, the hitch we hadn't done. Wheel spacers. Holy cow. Those are done. Well, that's about it. What's the goal for today the there, Ivo? Well, what's up? <laughs> the goal for the day is we're gonna get this rear end set up under there, weld the perches on, make sure everything's right, good and well. Start hooking everything back up. Get her rolling. All right, we just put these inch and a half spacers on here, and that does two things. One, it gets this tire a little further away from this leaf spring, gives a little more operating room, and plus, you know, on the road, you don't want your tire that close to the leaf spring, because as we mentioned, these truck axles are skinnier than van rear ends. So these truck rear ends are a little bit skinnier, about three inches or so, from what I remember. And uh, so that tire gets pushed out a little bit, and it uh, looks a little more proportionate with the van. So that's another thing it does. It just makes it proportionate with the van, matches up with that front end a little bit too, so. But anyway, right now, this is actually all the stock van brake stuff, which in our theory should hook right up to or this. Or not need much to do so, yeah. Exactly, so. We got all that over top of the leaf springs, that's out of the way, but that's another goal is to bolt up all this brake stuff and get this 12 bolt, six lug rear end, stop them. But we're about to, uh, well, I guess we need to grind the paint off of here first and then lower her down, right. get her set. Because that would make total noise. Tacked. And then weld. Great. All right, here we go. So you probably saw us going up and down, up and down, trying to figure out what in the world's going on. Because one side would measure one way, another side would measure another, but it would be just about dead center. And we were just making small adjustments, trying to get it closer and closer, but nothing was measuring out right. Well, we got the bolts in the leaf springs. Everything's mocked up, but got to tighten them down. Get all this wobble out of them. That probably will help position and uh, make measurements come out correctly.
All right, so here's the deal. Just got the weight back on the lift, so the weight's off the tires and stuff. But tightened up the uh, bolts on the leaf springs. That helped a little bit. And got it positioned where we wanted it. It was still off measuring. It was like an inch or half inch difference every time. And uh, we noticed the back of the van, it was leaning real hard to this side, sitting flat on the ground. You got to looking at this spring on this side and the weight's off of it now, but that helper spring is collapsing onto the helper spring and that one wasn't. So this spring here has got a significant amount of sag to it. So these are the stock springs off of Timothy. And we're going to take that spring out, see which one is sagging and just try to try to make something happen. Well, when we, uh, Seth and Ivan were putting the rear end under gray matter while I was working on the Jeep, and every time we would they'd sit it down, it, it just it wasn't centering up right. It, every time it was just it was off center. We couldn't figure out what, why the measurements were off. And once we got it completely down on the weight, we didn't notice this the other day. It was sitting uh, about not quite a half an inch lower on this side. So it was just, it was throwing everything off. And after looking, the, the spring, the rear spring on the passenger side is a little weak. So what we're doing is taking the spring back off because we had played with these springs and made them up. And what we did is we took the springs, the stock springs, found those that came off of my van, Timothy. Uh, and we're gonna take them apart and put it back together and get it back bring this side back to life to where it matches up on the other side to the van to sit level. Because what was doing, every time we would set it down, the van was being a little cocked. And what that would do is it made it look like the rear end was shifted over. And we kept measuring. every All the measurements would come out right, but it just didn't look right. So what it was doing with that thing leaning to one side, it was throwing us off. So we're not going to let it go out of there leaning. Seth will tell you, I'm lean, something leaning and not being right just drives me crazy. So we're going to We'll get it leveled up right. We're gonna go to lunch right now. Get that leveled back up. Get this spring painted up and get it under there and get that rear end under there like it's supposed to be. The whole process gets to start on. Oh, this is going to be a grand, Not great adventure. Though. She is under there. Yeah, uh, we took that spring out, played with the other spring, put uh, got the leaves and all back together, and that one looks like it's going to be right. Uh, we've got the perches where they need to go. Everything's centered up under there just like it's supposed to be, so we're going to tack the perches in, uh, double-check the pinion angle. We're pretty close on that. We'll double-check the pinion angle, tack in the perches, raise it back up. We'll burn the perches in good where they're supposed to be. Go ahead and set it back down on the ground, bolt the rear end up under it, and then we will start uh, measuring for drive shaft lengths, shock length, and then we'll work on making the uh, shock mounts that need to go. On the front, we've got to make shock mounts to the frame, the ones on the uh, differential we'll use, and on the rear, it's exactly opposite. We'll use the ones on the van and weld new mounts onto the rear rear axle. So, But yeah, I think everything's gonna be good, and then of course we'll, we'll drive it, 
a little while and check everything out. Some, some things are going to move around and settle, and we'll check all that out before we uh, send it off. But took a little while, but I think we got it figured out, but it's going to be all right. Ivan's got his, uh, his hood on. Ivan's ready. Ivan's good to go. He is under the belly of the beast. Oh, I can get. Ow. Ow. Woo. Back from the depths, I see. Oh, you gotta be a snake, <laughs> an octopus, everything. You can't ever have too many hands when you're a wilder. Oh, we live. Oh, we're, we're rolling. We got, uh, I think it's, uh, Friday. Well, it's, no, it's Thursday afternoon. And it's it's about quitting time. It's about to get dark here in North Carolina. Ivan just got through getting the perches welded onto the rear end. They look good. Like they're supposed to be. We'll get the, uh, rear end, the van set down on it. I will probably do that tomorrow. Uh, when I finish wrap up the Jeep that I'm working on over there. Seth and Ivan are actually leaving in the morning. Uh, I will be here at the shop by myself this weekend and try to get, I will finally be able to get some work done because they won't be here in my hair bothering me. So y'all will get to see some good work get done because uh, I usually don't get to get a lot of work done because of them two uh, messing me up and playing uh, games and stuff all the time in the shop instead of working. So. That's uh, what we're doing. We're getting ready to pull Seth's van down here. The timing's off a little bit on here, so we're going to pull it down here and check the timing, check all the fluids for him, and then they'll pull up Livia's van down here and check all that because they've got about a three-hour drive. So, uh, yeah, I guess. I guess you done upset the boy. He was offended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to do a little bit of uh, maintenance. And right now, yeah, and man, this, I'm telling you, this work day's come to an end. It's been cold here, cold and rainy. It's been about the worst day you could possibly have, freezing cold and raining all day long. So, but it's about to come to an end. Well, tell me about it. <laughs> well. We're back, uh, back down at the shop. Everybody's back home uh, this weekend. From this weekend, going, uh, going off and doing Christmas. It's, it's kind of crazy around Christmas time. Everybody's going in different directions. So we're back. I had done some work here, and I had, I had to make some new spring plates. I'm gonna show you for the rear end, and I was filming it. And well, I thought I was filming it. When I went to get the uh, <laughs> camera, I had evidently not hit the record button, so I didn't film me making the plates, but I, we, I figured we'd go over the way we did the rear end, uh, the lift on it. Uh, I, was, I was hesitant about it because some people have 
different opinions about the way uh, this is, but I got to thinking about it. You know what? This is the way we do it. This is the way we've done the last four. It's worked fine. This is the way a lot of people do it, so we're going to go over and show you exactly how we lifted the rear end on this thing because we had, the way we wanted to do it didn't work out. But what we did is we played around with some spring, different leafs, spring packs, and went with a shackle flip on the rear. The four of the vans that we've done, matter of fact, out of all the vans, there's only one that we didn't do a shackle flip on. And what we did is we com we changed the springs completely on it. It was, one, it was the very first van we did because we didn't know any different. And the reason... The, the reason we did it, don't, not doing it that way, the vans, if they're not a one ton, they have two inch wide springs on the back. Most everything else has got two and a half inch wide springs. So we took uh, two and a half inch wide springs and we had to really modify the rear hangers to get them in there. It was a lot of work to get it done. So the other four that we did, we just did shackle flips on them. And what that does is you just flip the rear shackle at the back, rather than it being up here, it puts it down here and it gives it about five inches of lift. And I know some people have, uh, will say that that's not the way to do it, but there are companies that shall sell shackle flip kits. I've seen it done for years. The front of vehicles are done like that. They, it's, I think they call this a compression shackle. And when it's flipped up top, it's called a tension shackle or vice versa. But anyway, it gets you about five inches of lift. You're able to use the same springs that you had. But what it does when you do that, it swings. If you can imagine the axle swinging at this point, it, it swings it down like this. It swings it forward. And when you put the tire on it, your tire is almost hitting the front. So it, it makes everything forward. So what, what you have to do is relocate that uh, axle back. So what we did, or oh, the way we do it, is uh, you you use a different pin. Well, let me go get the uh, spring. All right. When you buy these spring pads, and there's companies that make them that are like this for this location that you can relocate the axle. There's three different holes in them. This is usually where the spring sits in this hole. Well, what we did is we moved the axle back so it put the uh, the spring pin, pin in this hole, so that, that pushes the axle back. But what that does is it also changes the way the pin in the spring comes up through your, uh, your, your spring plate, which is, which is this. So usually your pin would be right here where that thing would be centered. Well, with it, with it pitched forward, what it does, if you can imagine the U-bolts, uh, they're, they're like this. They're wanting to go like this because your axle has moved back and this pin is in a different location. So what we had to do was make new spring pad. Anyway, <laughs> this is what I made <laughs> while the boys were gone. I thought I was recording it. So what, what you have to do Instead of this pin on your leaf springs hitting in the center, it hits up here because you moved it forward. So I made these new pads so that the spring, the spring pin would hit here. Because if you don't do that, like I said, the axle is moved forward. So I, I hope I'm explaining this right where everybody can understand it. I, there's a lot of things that I know in my head, but I have a hard time explaining it to you know to get the picture across of how it actually is. But long story short. When you do a shackle flip, it moves the axle forward. You have to move the axle back, and this is the way you have to do it to reposition the axle unless you change the springs completely and relocate the pin in the springs. And I don't know if anybody's ever tried to drill through a leaf spring. You can't do it. I've never seen a bit that would drill. This is the hardest steel I've ever seen in my life, and you can't get a hole, you can't get a hole drilled through it. So that's what we do. And the reason we're taking it off now, so Ivan's going to take these and cut the corners up round them off and make them look good and pretty and we'll get them painted up. But uh, I just wanted to show that to show everybody how we did the uh, rear end, the rear lift on it. And uh, like I say, it works out fine. We've had no trouble with them at all. A lot of people do it. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the way we do it. And another thing too, uh, I know you probably see this wheel spacer. I've said it a few times. These vans are a lot wider than trucks. 
and when you use the truck rear end under it, you need to space it out so it doesn't look crazy. It looks, looks in proportion. Uh, everything looks in proportion. And if you look at just about every company that does uh, uh, conversions, they run wheel spacers to get that right U joint. I know U joint that runs them on theirs and several other companies. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to touch base on that and show the way we did that and what we're doing. And that's what we got going on. And Seth's back. Seth's through editing videos. Yo. Woo. Stayed Good up job, late man. Last night, got up early this morning. <laughs> Done it. All right. All right, let's do it. Let's get her done. We were just uh, having a discussion. We're at the point now, uh, we've said in several videos that once we get the, the differentials hung, we would uh, measure for shocks. But we also need to make the shock mounts or get shock mounts. Um, you gotta have two, the mount up here on the front. This is where we make the shock mount on the, back, on the front. And the one for the stock, the rear end for the stock truck those shock mounts won't work on the van, so we had to cut those off. So we were just having a discussion. We had three options. We could take uh, some of the rear ends that we have out here and cut the mounts off of them, order them from uh, Barnes four-wheel drive. We get a lot of some of the brackets and stuff that we use from Barnes four-wheel drive because they're already pre-made and, uh, you know, fairly reasonable price, or oh, make them. So we think we've decided we're going to make them, and it's not a not gonna be a big deal. Basically up here, uh, if you know how a shock mount is, it's just gonna be basically just two pieces of metal that'll be welded to here that we can run a bolt through. Uh, and on the back, we just need to make something similar to this. Of course, it won't be angled here, but they need to go right here on the back. And basically all it'll be is just is three pieces of metal welded together that we'll weld here with a hole through it. And we've got the, we've got a perfect uh, piece of metal out there, the uh, right thickness. And uh, I think what we're gonna do, we're just gonna make a pattern. Alvin's gonna cut it out with the plasma cutter and we'll weld it up and we'll, we'll make them here in the house so that we won't spend any more money. So that's what we're gonna do. I was having trouble seeing big job. I could not see it. So <laughs> it looks a little jagged. But that's alright. Because I just needed this piece. Both piece. So I'm going to do four inch in this line. Seven eight twice to two inches. Math ain't my strong suit, bud. Well, uh, me neither, and I can just I can do better with shapes and I, I mean that I can figure the direct science up to it because I can't yeah. physically knit the yeah. math. Hit him and you know just multiplication, nothing. You know what I'm saying? Not doing. That's why I'm mean. <laughs> I don't know how to do it anymore. Seth's over here doing some touch up work. Yeah, some, some of the stuff, the paint and stuff, and we'll probably go back and do it a few more times when we get get it all together. Ivan's over here cutting the shock mounts out. I'm figuring out. 
Looks like he's in deep thought. What you got going on over here now? Well, just tighten this one down. I'm gonna move over to there, but putting the cotter pin and the grease fitting into this and just bolting it all down before we get too far. And... Uh huh. So Seth's, Seth's tying up the tie rod ends. Tying up the tie rod. All right, let's see how Ivan's chucking along there. And there's Olivia. Hello. Stealing wood. Well, look at you, Mr. Fabricator Man. Pretty nice. I tried. Where's the shock at? Uh, laying up here on top of the cabinet over there under the orange ball. There's Olivia stealing our wood. And that's some new stuff. Uh, let's see, the last left's off at 12, number 13. I'm just gonna put, Dad's gonna get mad. He hates it when he calls, calls them TKs. TKs slash trans. Shooks? Shocks? Oh, wait, I just saw this. Mount four wheel drive rear. It still needs to do nasty burnouts. Fifteen rear brakes because we just gotta get them just operational. They're all yeah. they're on there. And then nasty burnouts. <laughs> oh yeah. Plug up the welder. Nothing doing, bud. That's a starter tip from Haiti. <laughs> Plug up the welder. Ivan is over here. He's about got the uh, oh, I've already got a green, too. shock mounts ready to tack into place. He's got the housing cleaned off here. He'll tack those in. I'm going to um, probably start working on, I think we even talked about this, probably start working out the uh, shifter up here, the linkage on the shifter, get it worked out. And then once he finishes the rear shocks, we'll he'll get the mounting on the uh, front shocks. So... We are gonna set the camera up, we'll do that, and we'll be back in a minute. All right, Ivan's got the uh, got the shock mounts welded to the rear end. I'm working on the uh, the shift linkage. I'm getting ready to cut this. We've got to cut uh, what about three and a half inches out of this, and then we'll weld it together so we can get the shift linkage up in the uh, up in the van. So we will uh, we'll get this cut and weld it back up, and we'll show you how we did that. Got anything to add? No. We're about, we're, we're closing in, closing in <laughs> I'm on. getting in the short rows now. All right, what we're doing now? Uh, we shortened this shift linkage. 
this is what it used to look like, but we had to shorten it because like we said, once you put the uh, spring hangers in there, it uh, you have to move it over and it's actually got play room to play with. So what this will do where it was over here, now that we've got this, it's gonna be more in this area here. So that's what he's doing. We just cut that, he's welding it up and we'll get it up in here and we'll test fit it and make sure everything's okay. And then that should get the uh, shift linkage knocked out. And then we'll work on the, uh, we'll still got the front shocks to mount. They came in too. I haven't made the mounts for them. So we'll get those mounted. They'll go in this location right here. We've still got to do the shifter in the floorboard. Um, I know it's dark, but the shifter will come through the floorboard to do the four wheel drive. We've still got to mount and fabricate that. And just like, it's like I said yesterday, we're just buttoning up little, little loose ends. It's got to be uh, done that you, uh, I'm not saying you don't think about them. It's just when you're doing, you're building the project, you think about all the big stuff and then you remember, oh, well, we got to do all the little stuff too. So that's what we're doing now is buttoning that up. Uh, the tires came in, we'll get them mounted, get them on there and, uh, I think we'll be driving this thing next week. We'll get the Christmas holidays behind us. Uh, Christmas Eve is tomorrow. So I think we'll be test driving this thing next week. All right, I'm gonna get the ladder and I'm gonna get up there in the van. I want you to stand down here and watch the link. I'm gonna get up there and shift the link to make sure we've got it adjusted right and put it in all the gears. Okay. If I can get, we, I may be able to get it all the way down the low. We've still got the engine thing up there and it gets in the way of the shifter. But anyway, I'm gonna get the ladder, climb up there. You watch this and we'll show you how it works. Okay. All right, I'm in park now. Should be reverse. Yep. Neutral. Drive, overdrive. Drive. Second. First. Hey, boy. Yep, did right. every single one. I'm going to go all the way back to park. Felt good up here. Everything moved good and free. Look good down there? Yeah, do it. Do it a couple times. Reverse. Neutral. Drive. Drive, second, third. No, I mean, just, yeah, just got to do that a couple, just do it real quick. I was making sure everything's flowing good. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. Looks cool. All right, we did something right. Something. Yeah. All right, what I'm doing now, I had said earlier about the, there's enough slack in the speedometer cable to where you can get it to reach on the other side where it screws into the transfer case. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking it loose from these uh, brackets that hold to the frame and I'll, I'm gonna pull all that I can get. I'll go up here, up under the battery, there's a little bit more that I can pull. And just by doing what I've done here, pulling it through here and then getting it out of this, it did go through the frame here and then went to the side of the transmission. But once I've pulled it out there, I'll be able to route it. Here it is now across the top and then come over to here. And you can see now that I've almost got enough to make it. So once I get up there under the battery through the firewall and pull that little bit, I'll be able to screw it into here and you'll be able to have the speed on it. So. I'm like, dude, look, you do look <laughs> like those little dudes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what are you talking about? Trick. I was like, Shrek. Shrek. It's Shrek. Shrek. In the little potion, laboratory thing where they're, where they're going around. Right, All you right, need is right, like right, a, yeah. a, a face shield. But yeah, you look like one of those little dudes. I don't remember those on Shrek. We'll show you. It's Shrek 2, dude. I want to Shrek 2. It's like Shrek 1000 now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you look like, <laughs> you, look you, look like you can't move real good. <laughs> <laughs> I really can. Though. Like, I, I, I can't. Like, that's, that's All right, what are you doing though? I am uh, <laughs> getting ready to do an OSHA approved job here. I've got to get up here and uh, pull the hood release so I can open the hood to uh, get down in there behind the battery like I was talking about for that speed on there. 
Cool. But like I said, OSHA, it's, it's OSHA approved. Don't worry. That's right, Ivan. We don't approve by them ocean laws. Yeah, we don't even live in the ocean. We're the swim shop. That's right. Okay, I got up there and I did uh, pull the relief out that you can get up there at the battery cables. So now that I pull that through, that should give us enough to where we can get it. Pulled around here into the speedometer housing. So there you go. Now that's a way you can use the factory speedometer cable when you convert your van to four wheel drive without having to buy a new speedometer cable. <laughs> It's that easy. It's that easy. <laughs> Just tacked in. He'll come back in. He'll heat this up, weld it in permanent. Weld the shot on to the front. Right here is the section we have to cut in the floor for the shifter. This is all the section we've got. We need five and a quarter inches is how hard the hole has to be. So you can see we're four, just a little over four and a half. We can cut, we gotta, we'll have to cut this lip out. But this right here is the fuel lines. So we're gonna have to pull them out of the way or be very careful cutting right there oh that's terrible but it's going i mean that's all there we've got it's got to be perfect that's another thing that i was talking about um on my van the other vans we've done this cross member right here where the transmission mounted for on all the other vans it was back here so with this moved back that gave us like that much space that gave us like uh i think we had like nine inches or nine to ten inches of space here to work with to cut oh. the shifter in so it's just right. making it tight we'll, we'll get it figured out but it's just gonna be uh it's gonna be tight I know you know what? But it's gotta go in four wheel drive so we gotta figure it out yeah it's what your job is figuring stuff out yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, got the shocks finished up uh got the shifter uh fabricated for the uh shifter for the transmission Ivan and I were just mocking up and getting ready to cut the hole for the uh getting it ready to cut the hole for the uh, four-wheel drive shifter we're, right, we're not gonna do that today it's uh Christmas Eve Eve Christmas Festivus Eve, Festivus so we're, we're getting ready to wrap it up for Christmas we got uh we're going tomorrow uh family stuff so we'll be doing some family stuff all weekend but anyway we, we got the shops mounted Ivan got the uh the heat mounts made. We've got them in. We've just got temporary bolts on the front for right now. Um, we've got the uh, maybe a film to show us how how you showed you how we did the shifter. Got that done. It's ready to go. Shifts good. We've got the rear shocks mounted in place. How this was going to go. So all we've got left to do really to finish up. We'll we'll neaten up these brake lines. We'll get the emergency brake cables in and get those fixed up. We're gonna finish doing the uh, shifter for the transfer case. We've gotta cut the hole in the floorboard, get all that mounted. We've got a measure for the drive shafts, cut the drive shafts, mount the tires, get those balanced, and put the front bumper on, bleed the brakes, and then I believe we'll be able to start test driving. So we, we should, 
be able to test drive, start driving it next week after the Christmas holidays. And uh, I told uh, told Tom we were going to do a lot of driving on it since he was so far away to make sure everything was good, so we, uh, you know, we wouldn't have to worry about getting little uh, things. Something's happening here, guys, that y'all can't see in the background. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's it. I think this is the last one. Uh, I'm not going to say it's the last video for the year, but it's the last one before the Christmas holidays. Again, thank y'all. Uh, again, uh, you know, just keep liking, subscribing, sharing, and telling everybody about it. We, we got a lot of good stuff coming in 2023. So uh, that's it. I think that's a wrap for Christmas. We'll see y'all in the next one. Lee. Merry Christmas. <laughs> I think that was good. I think that was good. I mean, it felt all right. Uh, yeah, it was okay. I didn't feel good about it. This is why oh. I hate mechanic in it now. <laughs> yeah. And want to do nothing but fab. I was over there trying to get a oil filter off the front timing cover because I needed the oil pump housing for uh, the truck. Well, when I did, <laughs> the oil filter wrench slipped, knocked a hole in it, it flipped out of my hand, and oil went everywhere. Splashed over in the bucket. Luckily, I wasn't recording because we wouldn't have been able to put that footage on the channel. No. It didn't go pretty. But as, anyway. As Ivan said, it would have been one long beat. Yeah, I've ruined my... Uh, as y'all know, I've only got two sweatshirts, a blue one and a burgundy one. <laughs> and now I've ruined my blue one. My burgundy one. Well, it's slowly <laughs> becoming a blue one. Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah, well, you should go. Back at it. Back at it. <laughs>